in problem 9.1, we want to know what is the payback period. Payback period is in years. That's a very popular uh, method for evaluating investments, big investment decisions. So we have uh, $7,600 going out today. For that, we'll get 1,900 in, 2,900 in, 2,300 in, and 1,700 dollars in. And essentially, we're going to the chief financial officer today and asking for $7,600 and promising these cash flows on the project. Payback period is time in years to make my cash inflows equal to my cash outflow. All the CFO wants to know is when are you going to pay me back? Pretty simple uh, concept. So I simply take um, 7,600 minus 1,900 and ask myself, am I paid back after year one? And the answer is no, I still have a balance of $5,700. Then I subtract uh, the second year cash flow of $2,900, and I'm left with $2,800 to pay back, so I'm still not finished. Then I subtract um, $2,300 from the $2,800, and I get $500 remaining, still not paid back. <clears throat> and finally, I go in and say, how much of that um, $1,700 do I need? I don't need the entire $1,700, so that's between three and four years. So I need $500 over $1,700, or 0.294 years to pay this project off. So my final answer payback period, 3.294 years. And again, you can take this out as many decimal places as you'd like and take it to the um, day, month, hour, and so on, minute if you want to. 9.1 payback period, there's your answer. In problem 9.2, we want to know what is the payback period for this constant series of cash flows. Um, if the project costs 1700 if it costs 3300 or if it costs 5600 So again, it's the time in years to pay your CFO back for the money that she has given you. Um, in this case, I can take my cash outflow and divide it by the constant cash inflow. Very simple to calculate the payback period on these streams of uh, even cash flows. So in case one, I take uh, 1700 divided by 675 and I get 2.5185 years. In case two, I take 3,300 divided by 675, and I get a longer period, 4.889 years. And in case three, I take 5,600 divided by $675, and I get 8.2963 years. And since we really don't have a cash flow in year number nine, we could say never, never pays back. But if you want to calculate it out and see if you can get a ninth cash flow of $675, uh, promised a cash flow of 675 uh, and the ninth year would take 8.2963 years. There are your answers to problem number two. In problem 9.3, we're given that SIVA Inc. imposes a payback cutoff of three years. Should we accept either of these two projects? On top of the timeline, I have project A, which um, requires 45000 today from your CFO. For that, you'll promise that you'll give her 16000 in, 21000 in, 15000 in in year three, and 9000 in year four. Compare that with project B, which is you're requesting 55000 today. For that, you'll promise the CFO's 13000 in in year one, 15000 in flow in year two, 24000 in year three, and 255000 in year four, and the CFO has told you never come in my office with a project that takes more than three years to pay off. <clears throat> Payback period is simply the time in years to make my cash inflows equal to my cash outflows. So um, let's take case A first, 45,000, you're gonna give her 16,000 back in the first year, that leaves your remainder of 29,000 to pay back. Uh, then you're gonna give her 21,000 in year two, leaving a remainder of 8,000, and then uh, how much of the next year three do you need to pay off that 8,000? So 8,000 divided by 15,000 is 0 0.53333 years, giving me a payback period um, in uh, project A of 2.5333 years I accept because it's within her three year payback period limit. Uh, for case B, 55,000 out today. 13,000 in, 15,000 in, 24,000 in, and 255,000 in. So in year one of the 55, I, after year one, I have a remainder of 42,000. Uh, after year two, I have a remainder of 27,000. So 42 minus 15 is 27,000. Um, after year three, I pay back 24,000 and 27, I'm left with 3,000. How much of that 3,000 do I need to pay back in year 4.0011765 years 
to pay that back. So um, the CFO would basically say, out of my office, because it took more than three years. However, you may want to use a little common sense here and say, well, how long do I have to wait? What is 0.0118 years? How long do I have to wait to get part of that $255,000 bonus that's hanging out there in year four? Um, and the answer is that works out to about 4.29 days. So the question for the CFO, are you willing to wait 4.29 days to start seeing some of this cash flow? And the answer is probably going to be yes. So in reality, um, you're not going to reject that. You're probably going to accept that if that 255000 uh, starts flowing in early in the year. Whether if it comes in the last day of the year, well, that's another matter. The CFO may elect not to wait that long. There's your answer to problem 9.3. And problem 9.4, we're given that the project um, has cash inflows shown below. Let's put those uh, on a timeline, as usual, $2,800. Uh, $3,700 in year two, $5,100 in year three, and $4,300 in year four. This time, the discount rate is 14%. We want to figure out what is the discount to payback period. If the initial cost is 5200 then we're going to do two more cases. What happens if it's 5400 And what happens if it's 10400 up today? Now we're going to have to discount each of these cash flows back at 14%. So I'm going to divide my 2800 by 1.14, by 3700 by 1.14 squared, the 5100 by 1.14 cubed, and the 4300 by 1.14 to the fourth. And we get these resultant discounted cash flows. So 2800 over 1.14 is 245614. 3700 divided by 1.14 uh, squared is 284703. Um, 5100 over 1.14 cubed is 344235, and 4300 over 1.14 to the fourth is 254595. Those cash flows carry through, cash inflows carry through to all three cases. Uh, in case one, where we have an outflow of 5200, I need 2456 plus. Uh, a part of this 2847. How much of that 2847 do I need? I need 2743.86 out of that uh, 2847, so that's 0.9638 uh, in remainder years. So my answer for case A is 1.9638 years. For the 5400 case, I need the 26, uh, 2456 plus the 28. 47, then I need 96 dollars of the 34.42. So what's 96 divided by 34.42.0281 years? 2.0281 uh, years is my answer for 5400. And then when do I pay back the 10,400? Well, I need 26, 2456, 28.47, 34.42, and then uh, a bit of the 25.45. I need 1,654 dollars of the 25.45. That's about 65% or 0.6498 years. So the answer to the 10,400 case uh, takes me 3.6498 years to pay this back on a discount payback period, period basis. I do this exactly like I do the uh, pay, regular payback, except notice that I discount the cash flows before figuring out how long it takes to pay these amounts back. There's your answers to problem number four. In problem 9.5, you have a project costing $14,000 today and has annual cash inflows of $3,700 for six years. Uh, what's the discount of payback period in years? We know the payback periods are given in years. At a discount rate of 0%, 5%, and 19%. So I lay out my timeline. Today's cash outflow, $14,000. $3,700 in for six years. Nothing after that. Uh, what is the payback period time in years to make the discounted cash inflows equal to the cash outflow today? How many years does it take? to get my 14,000 back. So at 0%, I just lay out the 3,700s. I find that I need one, two, three, and then part of the fourth year, 3.7838 years. 
3.7838 years is your answer at no discounting. At a 5% discount rate, I get these cash flows. My 3,700 becomes 3,523, 81, 3,356, 01, 3196, 20, 30, 44, and so on. These are the discounted cash flows. So again, when do I pay my 14,000 back? 1, 2, 3, 4, plus a little bit, plus 0.2891 years of that. 2899, 4.2891 years is my answer at a discount rate of 5%. How about a super high discount rate of 19%? Again, I, I lay out my cash flows. 3,700 divided by 1.19 is 3,109. 3,700 divided by 1.09. 1.19 squared is 2612. See how these cash flows degrade rapidly. So here are your discounted cash flows. Uh, takes me all the way down into the eighth year, actually. And I'm only pretending that I'm going to get these last two. Uh, the answer really is never. It doesn't pay back in six years. But if I were to assume a 3,700 in year seven and a 3,700 in year eight, and I discount those back at 19%, I get an answer of, uh, I'm still a little bit short, $289 short out of the uh, 920 available in that discounted eighth year. So my answer is 7.3140 years if I were to assume or pretend that I got $3,700 in uh, year seven and year eight. True answer being never. Uh, problem 9.5, there are your answers. In problem 9.6, we have manufacturing plant costing us $15 million. We're going to depreciate a straight line to zero over four years. The projected net income over these four years is shown on the timeline 1754000, 1820500, 1716300. And 1097400, what is uh, the AAR? AAR, percent is average net income over average book value. So very simple from, since we do have straight line uh, depreciation, and we look at the book value, we can see it going from $15 million at t today at time zero up to zero at time four. So the curve looks like this. And I can simply bisect the line <clears throat> to get the average book value. So 15 million divided by two is 77.5 million. That only works with straight line depreciation, please note. We really should create a balance sheet with gross property, plant, and equipment. Um, less accumulated depreciation equals net PP and E will get the same answer, 7.5 million. But especially if you have uh, MACRS, so some of your digits, uh, other types of nonlinear depreciation will not work with this method. Since we have linear, we can do this. Average net, net income is 17, uh, 1754000 plus 1820500 plus 1716300 plus 1097400 divided by four values. I get an average uh, net income of 1597050. I divide my average net income by my average book value. I get an AAR of 21.294%. There's your answer to problem number six. In problem 9.7, we're going to do the internal rate of return on these cash flows. Um, the company's required return or hurdle rate is 14%. So your project has to come in higher than 14% for us to accept this project. Minus $26,000, you're asking the CFO for today. For that, you'll give her 11000 in, 14000 in, and 10000 in over three years. What is the IRR, the equation? That's the percentage rate where the discounted cash inflows equal my cash outflow today or the percentage rate where my MPV equals zero. So first thing I write on the paper when I see the letters IRR, find the IRR, MPV equals zero equals minus $26,000 plus 11,000 divided by one plus some rate plus 14,000 divided by one plus some rate squared plus 10,000 divided by one plus some rate cubed. If I do the math, plug in chug, start plugging in R's and find the, and move the 26,000 to the other side, stop with the R's when I hit 26,000, I get an exact IRR of 16.6945%. That is my project IRR. Since it jump, jumps over the hurdle rate or required rate of return of 14%, I'm going to accept this project. Here's your answer to problem number seven. In problem 9.8, we have the firm in problem 9.7 using the MPV rule now to accept the project at 11%. Discount rate and also a 24% discount rate. So we're creating a mini NPV profile. Same cash flows we had in problem seven. 
net present value is the negative cash outflow plus discounted cash inflow. So I take these uh, discounted cash inflows by 1.11, 1.11 squared, 1.11 cubed, and so on for the 11%. I get these resulting uh, discounted cash inflows. I subtract the discounted uh, today's cash outflow and I get an NPV of 25.84.54. Positive NPV, accept, is my decision. At 11%, if I have a discount rate of 24%, same cash flows. This time I'm going to divide by 1.24, 1.24 squared, and 1.24 cubed. And I'm going to get an NPV of negative 27. 79.06, negative MPV, my decision at 24% is reject. And there's your answers to problem 9.8. In problem 9.9, .9, we have given that a project provides an annual cash flow of 15400 per year for nine years. This project costs $67,000 today if you want to uh, get into it, and the required return is 8%. <laughs> Is this a good project at 8%? How about at 20%? <clears throat> What's the indifference rate for the IRR? So NPV um, is equal to minus cash outflow plus the annuity present value cash inflows. Uh, we're going to calculate the NPV first, then we're going to calculate the IRR, where NPV equals zero. So NPV at 8% is minus 67,000 plus 15,400 over 1.08 plus 15,400 over 1.08 squared. 15,400 over 1.08 cubed all the way out to 1.08 to the ninth, or we can realize that it's an annuity of 15,400 and use the annuity present value. <clears throat> C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the T over R, $15,400 <clears throat> times 1 minus 1 over 1.08 to the ninth over 0.08. I get an NPV at 8% of 29,202 and 7 cents. Now, 20% same procedure. I can take uh, 15,400 over 1 1.2 plus 15,400 over 1 1.2 squared, and so on. I realize it's, I have an annuity here. I'm using annuity present value of the cash inflows. Uh, so minus 67,000 plus 15,400 over uh, 1 minus 1 over 1 1.2 to the ninth. Now we're using the required return 20% over 0.2, and I get a NPV value of negative. Four, nine, two, three, and twelve cents. And we can see um, somewhere between those two values, it would, your graph would cut through the x-axis, and so our IRR lies somewhere in between those two values. So how do I find IRR? Whenever you see the word, the letters IRR, write down NPV equals zero equals. That's how we start the IRR problem. Um, 50, uh, minus 67,000, let's not forget that, so minus the cash outflow, plus 15,400 over 1 plus R, plus 15,400 over 1 plus R squared, plus 15,400 over 1 plus R cubed, all the way out to 15,400 divided by 1 plus some rate to the ninth, and we're solving this equation for R. What is the rate where we're in difference, where the MPV equals zero? The indifference rate is 17. 0.6711%. And there are your answers to problem number nine. In problem 9.10, we're given a series of cash flows, and the author asks the question, what is the internal rate of return? Discounted cash flow return on investment, uh, sometimes called. Uh, so the first cash outflow is 13,900, and then we have a cash inflow of 6,400. 8,700 and 5,900. If we were to get these cash flows coming in and that cash flow going out, what is the re uh, return on this investment? So the first thing I write on the board is NPV equals zero equal minus the cash outflow plus the present value of those cash inflows. Find the rate where those two are equal when I move this to the other side. So it's the rate where the discounted kind of cash inflows equals today's cash outflow. So first thing I write on the board is um, NPV equals zero equals minus 13,900 plus 6,400 over 1 plus sum rate plus 8,700 over 1 plus sum rate squared plus 5,900 over sum plus 1 plus sum rate to the third and the percent IRR 
um, that will make my cash, discounted cash inflows equal to my cash outflow is 24.671%. Here's your answer, problem number 10. In problem 9.11, uh, we're, get, we're I'm wanting to know what is the NPV, the series of cash flows, same set of cash flows as in problem 10. <clears throat> um, and we want to know the NPV is 0%, 10%, 20%, and 30%. This is called an NPV profile. Create the NPV profile, and we can see approximately where the um, IRR lies. So, uh, the NPV is equal to minus the cash outflows plus the discounted cash inflows. Um, and that IRR from the last problem's rate where the discounted cash flows equal to the cash outflow. So somewhere in this NPV profile, we'll find the IRR. So NPV at 0% is minus the first cash outflow plus 6,400 over 1 plus 0%. Plus 8,700 over 1 plus 0% squared. That's 5,900 over 1 plus 0 percent cubed, and if I do the math, I get a, an NPV of $7,100 even, except that's 0 percent. At 10 percent, uh, minus the same process, minus 13,900 plus 6,400 over 1.1, 8,700 over 1.1 squared, 5,900 over 1.1 cubed, and here I get an NPV of 35 41 and 2. At 20% same process except I'm dividing by 1.2, 1.2 squared, 1.2 cubed and I get an MPV of 8.89 and 35 cents. And at 30% I divide by 1.3, 1.3 squared and 1.3 cubed and then I get an MPV of negative uh, 114.351. And there are your MPVs now. Using that MPV profile, where does my IRR lie? We can see it crosses through the x-axis somewhere in here between 20% um, and 30%. And we found in the last problem that it was 24.0671. Uh, so this ties in exactly to problem number 10. That we can plot these uh, MPVs graphically and see where that uh, MPV line crosses the x-axis, it would be at 24.0671%. Here's your answer to problem number 11. In problem 9, 12, we have a garage inc with two mutually exclusive projects, A or B. I can't do both. I only have uh, $43,500 for either or. Can't do them both. Um, the required return in our company is 11%. Should I accept either of these projects? So, um, what do we do? Well, we know the best method is to do the NPV, um, but first we're going to find the IRR. So we'll, we'll use the IRR, which we know we can have some trouble with, with mutually exclusive projects. So here are the cash flows, and for purposes of uh, calculating a possible crossover rate, I'm also going to take a, strike a third column out here, which is B minus A. I take the project B values, subtract project A values, and I'll get the B minus A column there. I'm going to use that later in the problem for the um, indifference rate or crossover rate. So, NPV is minus your cash outflows uh, plus present value of the cash inflows, and the IRR is the rate at which my discounted cash inflows equal my cash outflow today. So first, uh, I'm going to calculate the IRR of A and B. How do I do that? NPV equals zero equals minus 43,500 plus 21.4 over 1 plus some rate plus 18.5 over uh, 1 plus sum rate squared, plus 13.8 over 1 plus sum rate cubed, plus 7,600 over 1 plus sum rate to the fourth. If I do the math and calculate little r, I get 18.3340 for project A. Putting these uh, project B cash flows in the same equation, I get an IRRB of 17.3743. So which do I take? Well, I take uh, project A, if I'm evaluating IRR without knowing if these things might cross over and cause the CFO some confusion. Um, this one jumps over the hurdle rate of 11% better than project B, so in this case I accept A. <clears throat> now I want to calculate the net present value, which we know is the best method for evaluating large uh, investment projects, the MPV of these cash flows at, 11, at the company's uh, hurdle rate of 11%. So I take minus 43,500 
uh, plus 21.4 over 1.1 plus 18.5 over 1.1 squared plus 13.8 over 1.1 cubed plus uh, 7,600 over 1.1 to the fourth, I get a, an MPV at 11% of um, 1581, 5891, I'm sorry, 589109, 589109 for project A. Do the same math for project B using these cash flows right here. Um, and I get 746780. What do I do? I pick the larger of the two NPVs at 11% and I'm picking project B in this case. So with IRR, I'm, I'm picking uh, project A and with NPV, I'm picking project B. So there's a chance these things cross over and can cause great confusion. That's a problem we have with mutually exclusive projects and the internal rate of return decision rule. So to calculate the difference rate, I calculate B minus A. I take uh, negative 43.5 minus and minus 43.5 and I get zero. I take 6,400 minus 21,4 and get 15,000. I take 14,7 minus 18,5 get minus uh, 3,800. I take 22,8 minus 13,8 get 9,000. And I take 25,2 minus 7,600 and I get 17,6. And then to calculate the crossover rate, I do the uh, IRR on that third column of cash flows. Crossover rate of the MPV of B minus A equals zero, equals minus zero, first cash flow, plus minus 15,000 over 1 plus R, plus 13,800 over 1 plus sum rate squared, 9,000 over 1 plus sum rate cubed, and 17,6 over 1 plus sum rate to the fourth. If I do this, I get a crossover rate of 15.1876%. Um, and what do I do here? Well, I see that I take B at lower rates and I take A at higher rates. So at rates um, lower than um, 15.1876, I take B, and at rates higher than 15.1876, I take project A. This leads to great confusion uh, for potentially for the CFO. There are your answers to problem number 12. In problem 913, we're given that we want to sketch the MPV profile for X and Y <clears throat> for discount rates from 0 to 25%, and also find the crossover rate if appropriate. Uh, so it looks like we have two mutually exclusive projects. We can do one or the other. Uh, they both cost, they each cost 24000 bucks, and they give off different cash inflows. Uh, for the purposes of calculating the crossover, possible crossover rate, I'm going to take uh, y minus x, so 20 minus 24000 minus minus 24000 equals 0, 12, 1 minus 10, 6, 20 equals 14, 80, and so on. <clears throat> and on these, uh, to calculate a crossover rate, I'm going to do the internal rate of return on these four cash flows a little bit later in the problem to see if indeed there is crossover. So my equations are MPV is minus cash outflow plus present value of cash inflows like all the other problems and your IRR's rate where the discounted cash inflows equals the cash outflow. So I create a little MPV profile and I take uh, these cash flows to get these numbers I would calculate uh, minus MPV equals minus 24,000 plus 10,620 over 1 plus 0 plus 10,900 over 1 plus 0 squared plus 10,500 over 1 plus 0 cubed. And if I do that, I get 8,020. At 5%, I take do the same thing for project X. MPV equals minus 24,000 plus 10,620 over 1.05 plus 10,900 over 1.05 squared plus 10,500 over 1.05 cubed. If I do that, I get 5,071.20. Uh, and again, I write down all of these uh, MPVs at the various discount rates. This is called an MPV profile. So there's your MPV profile for X, and there's your MPV profile for Y. Here I do these cash flows at these discount rates to get those MPVs. So if we look at the chart, we see that um, the MPV for X is higher at low rates, XXX, and then there's a crossover here, and then we start taking YYY. The Y MPVs are higher than the XMPVs at some crossover rate right between 10 and 15%. So I could do, draw, put the, plot these graphically on an XY plot and see if they cross over. And that is always a possibility. Um, or I can actually calculate the crossover rate by calculating the IRR on the Y minus X column. So take Y minus X, write down the numbers, and do and uh, do a crossover rate calculation by taking the MPV of Y minus X equals 0 equals 0 plus 1480 over 1 plus r, plus a minus 1540 over 1 plus r squared, plus a minus 100 over 1 plus r cubed. I'm trying to solve this for r. I get a rate of 10.1862%. So 
So these things do cross over here at uh, 10.1862 R and then in PV if I were to plot that. And um, I take X at low rates and then I take project Y where there's a crossover at higher rates of return beyond 10.1862. Um, there's your crossover rate calculation for problem 913. In problem 914, we're going to give you a challenge on this one. Late Sweet Petroleum is trying to evaluate a generation project with falling cash flows at a 12% required return. Cash flows are 45 million out today for the cost of the project, 71 million in next year, and then another negative 15 million dollars perhaps for a cleanup later in the project. Uh, compute the IR. Do we accept this project if our required return is 12% and why? And find the IRR. How many IRRs are there? So first we're going to find the MPV, and then we're going to find the IRR, the rate at which my discounted cash inflows equals my cash outflow, and the point where MPV equals zero. So first MPV equals uh, minus 45 million plus 71 million over 1.212 plus negative 15 million over 1.12 squared. We do the math, we get a net present value on this project of 6 million 400 34,948.98 cents, except because we have positive MPV. Then we want to find the internal rate of return and how many are there. For this one, we're going to use Descartes rule of sign that will tell me the maximum number of IRRs with those uh, non conventional cash flows. Non conventional cash flows are ones that go minus, plus, minus. What we like to see is minus, plus, plus, plus. But nevertheless, those are our cash flows. Um, how many possible IRRs might there be? According to the cultural sign, there might be no IRRs. There might be one. There might be two. So the question is, how many are there? And that's a challenge question. What are they? What are the IRRs? How many are there? Here's how you do the IRR. MPV equals zero equals minus 45 million plus 71 million over one plus some rate plus minus 15 million over one plus some rate squared. What is the IRR? Are there any? Uh, and how many are there? There's your challenge question number 914. In problem 915, we're going to calculate the profitability index, the sixth of our uh, methods for calculating and, and evaluating large investment projects. What's a PI at 10%, 15%, and 20% discount rates on this series of cash flows? Project costs 15300 today. For that, I'll get 9400 end of year one, 7600 end of year two, and 4300 end of year three. The equation is profitability index is discounted cash inflows divided by the initial cash outflow, 15,300, or the benefit to cost ratio, as it's also known. In econ, you probably learned a cost benefit ratio. This one will be the benefit to cost. We're going to do it on a discounted basis. So I take uh, at 10%, I take my first cash inflow and divide it by 1.1. 9,400 by 1.1, 7,600 by 1.1 squared, and 4,300 divided by 1.1 cubed, I divide all that by my initial cash outflow of 15.3, I get a PI of 1.1802. Since that's a um, greater than one profitability index, that gives me a decision of positive NPV. Except at 15%, I take these same cash flows and divide by 1.15, 1.15 squared, 1.15 cubed, discount them back to today. Divide that by the cash outflow of 15,300. I get a PI of 1.0946 times, again, positive NPV. Accept. And a 20% required rate of return or discount rate, 9,400 divided by 1.2 plus 7,600 divided by 1.12 squared. 4,300 divided by 1.2, uh, I'm sorry, 1.2 squared. Uh, 4,300 divided by 1.2 cubed. 20% uh, discount rate, and I divide all those infl discounted inflows by 15,300. I get a PI of 0 0.9921 times. This is going to give me a negative NPV, in which case we're going to reject this project at 20% discount rate. There are your answers for problem 915.